In today's video, we find out what the best mighty weapon is in Grounded. The first thing I had to do was grab all of the tier 3 mighty weapons in the game. These were just melee weapons, so no Black Ox crossbow. In total, I tested 13 weapons, which were the Club of the Mother Demon, the Ant Lion Greatsword, the Fire Ant Club, the Tick Makawaka Weewa, the Scythe of Blossoms, the Toenail Scimitar, the Widow Dagger, the Rusty Spear, the Tiger Mosquito Rapier, the Black Ox Hammer, the Termite Axe, and two newcomers for this video, we have the Pinch Whacker and the Prod Smacker. Every single one of these weapons was upgraded to level 9 Mighty. Next, we move on to the enemies that I decided to kill. It's going to be much quicker for me to tell you which enemies I didn't kill, to be honest. I killed all of the neutral enemies. I didn't kill any passive enemies. When it comes to the aggressive enemies, I didn't kill bosses or enemies that don't respawn. The only other two enemies I didn't kill were the infected gnat and the lawn mite, as the weapons were one-shotting them, making it hard to time it. So, that leaves us with 8 neutral enemies and 30 aggressive ones. Next, let's get into the methodology. The method used in this video was identical to the one used in the best salty, best spicy, best fresh, and best sour weapon videos. Firstly, this test was conducted in a world on WoW difficulty with stamina drain enabled, meaning weapons that use high stamina amounts don't get an unfair advantage. I also had all milk mole upgrades, as people looking for the best weapon likely have all of their molars spent upgrading their character. The only mutation I used was Natural Explorer, and the only armor I used were the Aphid Slippers. When killing an enemy, the timer begins on the frame of video where the first hit registers. The timer then ends on the frame that you can see the enemy's health bar is empty. I made a table using these times and scored the weapons with two methods. The first method is total time, meaning I add up all of the times for one weapon, killing all 38 enemies to get an overall time. The second method I used was to score the weapons by giving them medals. This means that if a weapon is the fastest at killing a particular bug, it would get a gold medal. Second would get a silver, and third would get a bronze. In 13th and last place, making it the worst mighty tier 3 weapon we have, the Tiger Mosquito Rapier, with a time of 11 minutes and 31 seconds. I mean, is anyone surprised? This can be added to the list of achievements that this weapon has, including the worst spicy, salty, fresh, and sour weapon in the game. This weapon did manage to somehow achieve a silver medal and three bronze medals, making this the first time this weapon has ever received any medals. The silver medal came against one of the most hated creatures in the game, the Ladybird Lava. This weapon is still trash though, and finished last by over a minute, like always. Do not use this weapon. In 12th place, with a time of 10 minutes and 15 seconds, we have the Fire Ant Club. This weapon was able to achieve two bronze medals, but ultimately was poor. The reason this weapon did so poorly is because there are a few enemies resistant to generic damage on the list that don't show on the creature cards and are hidden in the game files. I never recommend this weapon as it is the worst club on the list. In 11th place, with a time of 9 minutes and 59 seconds, making it the first weapon under 10 minutes, we have the Black Ox Hammer. This weapon was only able to achieve a single bronze medal against the Roly Poly. It yet again finishes very low on our list, as it has a really slow swing speed. Although I do recommend carrying a hammer, I don't recommend using it to kill enemies. In 10th place, with a time of 9 minutes and 53 seconds, we have the Tick Makawaka Wiwa. This weapon did surprisingly well on the list, and also managed to get 4 bronze medals. This is the best lifesteal weapon on the list, but it's still in 10th overall, meaning I don't recommend it, as there are much better slashing and one-handed weapons on the list. In 9th place, with a time of 9 minutes and 43 seconds, we have the Pinch Whacker. This weapon surprised me with how high it got on the list, but what surprised me more was that it did so whilst achieving zero medals. This weapon is one I recommend getting really early in the game, as it can be really powerful to use when you have no other tier 3 options. But, once you get more options, I recommend switching as soon as possible. Coming in at 8th place, with a time of 8 minutes and 55 seconds, we have the Scythe of Blossoms. This is the most unique weapon on the list, 
as it is the only weapon to have a dual damage type. This weapon deals both chopping and slashing damage when upgraded down the mighty path. This worked both in its favour and against it, as enemies weak to both, like the wolf spider, got destroyed, and enemies resistant to both took no damage, like the roly poly. This weapon got an impressive 6 gold, 2 silver, and 9 bronze medals, although a lot of these were against low health enemies, where the swing speed was the main factor. Overall, I don't recommend this weapon, but it is an interesting one for sure. Making its way into 7th place, with a time of 8 minutes and 44 seconds, we have the Widow Dagger. This is actually the highest finish that the Widow Dagger has ever achieved, and it was also able to gather a silver and a bronze medal against the Antlion and Infected Wolf Spider, respectively. Despite this being the weapon's best finish, I still can't recommend it, as there is a better one-handed slashing weapon on the list. Next up, in 6th place, with a time of 8 minutes and 14 seconds, we have the Antlion Greatsword. This weapon also achieved its highest ever finish, and was also able to achieve 2 gold, 5 silver, and 3 bronze medals. The gold medals achieved were against the Black Widowling, and the Tick, strangely. This weapon did a solid job for an early game tier 3 weapon, and it's probably the best early game weapon on the list, so I would recommend using it until you get later into the game. Rising from the ashes for its highest placement ever, with a time of 7 minutes and 40 seconds, we have the Rusty Spear. This weapon massively impressed me in this test, and got an impressive 7 gold, 4 silver, and 3 bronze medals. I don't know why, but removing the elemental damage from this weapon seemed to make it extremely strong, and it would get even stronger when thrown. I have to recommend this weapon due to it placing 5th, getting so many medals, and being even stronger when thrown, which would likely place it much higher on the list. In 4th place, with a time of 7 minutes and 27 seconds, we have the Prod Smacker. This weapon was decent, it is decent, scoring 3 gold, 6 silver, and 3 bronze medals. This test was with regular attacks, so we didn't get to see the special effect of the Prod Smacker with its charged attack but it was still able to hold its own against most of the weapons on the list. But it doesn't quite score as high as another club on the list, and it is extremely difficult to get, so I can't quite recommend using it if you aren't doing charged attacks. In third, with a time of 7 minutes and 2 seconds, we have... No, this, this can't be right. There must be a mistake, it's the... Club of the Mother Demon? <gasps> this weapon is placed outside of the top two, for the first time ever. This is because clubs deal generic damage, and without the bonus elemental weakness damage to help it, the club just falls short. It got an impressive 6 gold, 6 silver, and 2 bronze medals, but simply wasn't strong enough. This is the strongest two-handed weapon on the list for those looking for that particular playstyle. In second, with a time of 6 minutes and 58 seconds, we have the Toenail Scimitar. Wow! This weapon never disappoints, and yet again it has been amazing. This weapon got the most medals of any weapon on the list, with an impressive 14 gold, 6 silver, and 5 bronze medals, for a total of 25 medals against the 38 enemies. This weapon is extremely powerful, and I highly recommend using it. In first place, with a time of 6 minutes and 49 seconds, we have the Termite Axe. I have no clue how this weapon is so good, and how it has managed to finish first overall. It only got 1 gold, 6 silver, and 5 bronze medals, but it is just so consistent that it wins. I genuinely had to check that I had added the times correctly 3 times, just to make sure that this was correct. This is the only weapon on the list that deals just chopping damage, and it clearly paid off. The other thing that makes this weapon so good is, similar to the Black Ox Hammer, it seems to have really low stamina usage due to it being a tool. I highly recommend this weapon, as it is the best mighty weapon in the game. Not only that, but it is one-handed, which makes it really easy to use. Thank you so much for watching this video. As I mentioned earlier, this entire video was made in the space of one week, so if you appreciate the effort I put in, please consider subscribing. I will do another part to this series where I test out all of the ranged weapons, including the staffs, and compare them to the melee weapons. I will see you in the next Grounded video. Have a great rest of your day.